All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, Why Happy Wife, Happy Life is the Most Toxic Advice You Can Give. And guys, this article, believe it or not, is actually written by a woman. And she's going to go through this whole thing, calling BS on the whole happy wife, happy life concept, and how pretty much it's a recipe for disaster for guys if they go along with this mindset. And guys, i got to tell you something right now. Over the two years I've been doing this channel, and I've gone over countless articles and personal stories that you guys send in, and crazy types of stories online about these awful things that happen to these poor guys that don't know any better. One of the most common themes of all these stories is this, that these guys, through their behavior and actions, pretty much do this. They go for the happy wife, happy life thing, where they put the girl on a pedestal, kiss her butt, never ever call her out on her rude, disrespectful, bad behavior, if you will, never check her, give her everything, never say no to her, amongst many other things, and it turns into a disaster. And like the title of this article about being toxic and all that, it hits the nail right in the head. And I got to say, it is one thing for your relationship guys, that, that I, you know, I know I got a lot of relationship guys that watch this. There's a big difference between you have a girlfriend or fiance or wife, and she's cool. She treats you with respect. She uh, is good to you, and all these things that she should, and you treat her well. There's one thing treating her well on the basis she treats you well, with respect and a lot, and you got a good thing going. It's another thing if you are doing all these things for her, and she treats you like garbage and talks down to you, and you never ever. You get my point. This is the situation where you're not being treated well, and, and, and still, the guy keeps doing this. So I'm going to get into this, guys. It's, pretty, it's a nail right in the head. And again, it's good to hear when a woman actually writes something like this. And this comes from a publication that has its female writers that tend to support guys. So I like to do an article from this uh, online publication from time to time. So it starts off, it says, uh, The other week, I walked around my local park and passed a couple holding hands. Looking pretty content, I noticed the man was wearing a t-shirt saying, Happy wife, happy life. Contemplating this made me feel odd. I realized I disagree with the statement. I heard the joke said, I heard the saying many times before, and I know it's meant to be a joke. It's cute and it rhymes, but to be honest, I find it annoying and cringeworthy. Yeah, well, get in line, sister. More like, uh... Happy life, no wife. I know it's all about context, but I see a defeated man where, whenever I hear the saying. A man who bases his happiness around his wife's moods sounds weak to me. To me, it implies that a woman can get away with anything in the relationship. She can, be, she can behave overly emotional, irrational, manipulative, and entitled, and her man should just put up with it. Pretty much sums it up. Again... How many stories, articles, and all that have I gone over where guys did this thing? And they're treated like dog shit. And these are these guys that are conditioned to think, if I do all these nice things, then she'll love me more. When in actuality, they get the exact opposite. Women do not respect weakness. And there are actually a lot of women out there, when the man acts weak, they have so much disdain for his weakness, they, in a way, feel like they got to punish him for that and act worse. And these guys will just put up with it and put up with it and put up with it because they just have no self-esteem or self-worth. They've been worn down. They have no male mentors in their life to show them the path if you will. This is why I do what I do, to help guys out, to help minimize the misery out there. Goes on and says, uh, he should always be the rescuer and, and, and pathologically give to her. He should bend to her every whim because if she isn't satisfied, there is no happiness in the house. How is this fair? This doesn't sound like a healthy relationship to me. If anything, it sounds exploitive and even abusive. If the shoe were on the other foot and women were to say, happy husband, happy life, there would be outrage. You're darn right about that, honey. I appreciate her saying that. It says the happy wife, happy life saying undermines the important fact that marriage is a partnership. Both partners should have equal accountability and responsibility in the relationship. Both partners should feel like they can voice their opinions and influence one another. And both partners should have pa share power and privilege. You should have mutual respect. Well, in the ideal situation, that the man is the leader in the relationship. And let me tell you something right now. A lot of women would freak out hearing somebody say something like this, but it's been my life experience that feminine women, feminine women that are traditional and all that, they want a guy that leads. They want a guy that they can trust to lead. Therefore, they can be remain in their feminine nature. The problem is that you have so many guys out there that have been so weakened 
in this in this last generation or so, thanks to many, many, many things, that the women out there, one, they've been conditioned to be masculine, but number two, they don't trust the guy's strength to let them lead, okay? Feminine women want a guy that's strong, they can respect, because if they don't respect you, they sure as hell ain't going to love you, in their version of love, because it's different between men and women. But if a guy isn't strong, the guy doesn't take charge, the guy just kisses her butt, puts her on a pedestal, endures BS from her, she can't trust him to lead. And then, and you get what we get today. But the traditional feminine ones, they like a strong man, a leader. Okay? And notice, I'm sure you guys, if you're honest with yourselves, you've noticed, you've known guys in your life, or maybe you guys are actually this type of guy, where you are take charge. You are a leader. You're not, not because like you're commanding to be in charge, but just simply your very nature is one that people respect and admire, and you're a leader. And you, or somebody you know who's like this, the women they're with are very feminine, and they let the guy lead because that's what they like. That's what they're attracted to, and it's a rare quality nowadays. Anyhow, I had to get that out. Anyhow, of course, you should want to make your spouse happy, but your self-worth, life, and happiness sh shouldn't revolve around this. Anyway, how many guys out there that make making their lady, if you can call them that, their sole purpose in life? The relationship your wife or girlfriend shouldn't be your purpose. Improving yourself, becoming the best you can be in many fronts in your life, that should be your purpose. Traditionally, making the relationship the purpose is the feminine trait. That's usually what the women did. Now the women are going after their goals and ambitions, and the men are going after relationships and making her happy. How well has that worked out? When Thanks to the, the roles being reversed. Thanks to our society. Thanks to the ethnicity. We were trying to condition men to behave more like women, and women to behave more like men. This is what we got today, and it's all fucked up. It says here, the truth is most women don't respect men who say yes to everything. Try no women respect men. This it. The only women that want yet yeah, guys that are yes men are masculine and are effinous, and they want that as a way to like feel better about themselves by having some guy they can boss around. It's not just a married issue; it goes with every human relationship. Sure, it's nice when your husband does nice things for you, but if he always says yes without ever questioning or challenge you, you'll end up walking all over him because he has no boundaries and no backbone. Plus, wouldn't it be better if your husband had a mission of his own instead of being caught up in always pleasing you? There you go. Women like guys with goals and ambitions. Guys are constantly improving themselves. If you don't believe me, start doing that, guys. And you're going to notice that women are going to pay attention. Like, wow, look at him. Look how he trans He was overweight, but now he transformed his body. He looks great. Look at him. He's moving up in the world. This, this, this. And not just so they can get the resources, but just in general. Women like guys are go-getters that are fearless after their goals. The problem, the thing is, it's rare. So if you're a guy that takes care of yourself, looks pretty good, it's got a good personality, uh, um, uh, and also some good physical attributes, and you're on your grind, on your purpose, making things happen, you're going to be noticed because most guys don't do that. And most guys these days have no backbound, make the girl his purpose, and what happens when you make your girl your purpose? It's a fucking disaster. Uh, a good way to see if the relationship is unbalanced or has any underlying issues is self-reflect. If you catch yourself feeling the need to control or manipulate your husband into doing things your way, pause for a second and ask yourself why. Some ways in which women control their husband's behavior include constantly checking up on him, telling him how to load the dishwasher or telling him how to do everything, dictating who he can and can't spend his time with, crying and being overly emotional to trigger the damsel in distress response. If any of this stuff sounds familiar, guys, you know, think about it. Uh, grab a pen and paper and ask yourself why you feel the need to do this and see what comes up. Journalizing is a great way to get to the bottom of what's going on internally and in your relationship. People are often unaware of where their anger and frustration stem from, and over time it can manifest into bitter bitterness and resentment. It is essential to slow down and give yourself the space to focus inward from time to time. For example, if you're constantly telling your husband what to do, ask yourself, is he a child who needs to be told, or is there something else going on? How does this make you feel? If you feel frustrated or angry, what do you feel about this? Are you tired or hungry? Do you wish he'd be more of a man, or are you still annoyed about the time he overstepped your boundaries and now is manifesting as passive-aggressive behavior in you? Do you need to resolve this issue with him by communicating openly and honestly? Lots of passive-aggressive people out there, guys, and you do not want to be in relationships with them. Uh-uh. 
If things are really bad and you find that you can't get through to your husband, it might be time to ask others for help. Yeah, well, good luck there. But what she's describing there, that's what happens in a lot of relationships. And again, when the man is the leader, when he has enough self-esteem, strength to take charge, in a, not in a mean kind of way or a bossy way, but just in a natural way, He's got things going for himself with the self-improvement and all that and the confidence and all, and someone that she can feel safe, trusting to lead. This type of bullshit is not going to happen. But the second he stops acting that way and she has to question his strength, question his masculinity, that's when tests start. That's how they do it. And if a guy fails the test, more tests continue and on and on and on. This is why, you know, I've said this before lots of times, guys. And I'm jumping around with this whole thing with this article, but it's important to come out. And I freestyle here, so some things come to me right away. Some things come to me later on, as you guys are well aware. I talk to you a lot of times about the difference between nice guys and bad boys. There's lots of differences, but the two main things, in my opinion, based on my life experience, is this. Nice guys always uh, put women on a pedestal and, and make them their purpose. And nice guys never check their women. If she's being disrespectful or being a pain in the ass, they never, because they're scared shitless to do so, that she'll get mad at them or kick them to the curb or something like this. Bad boys put themselves first above anything else. They certainly don't put women on a pedestal and they always check them when they're being disrespectful, a pain in the butt, whatever that may be. And notice who the women always chase after, the bad boys, because by checking her, it shows he has a backbone, he has a spine, he has a self-respect, doesn't mean he has to be a jerk to her, but if she's being difficult or whatever, he's going to call her on it. And doesn't mean he has to say, start screaming at her and th- kicking a chair or the garbage can saying, you effing B or whatever. It's just say uh, he's bringing it up and he's calling her on it. Done. And he has his own life is his purpose, not her. And they chased after that guy. So this is how the nice guys always bossed around and taken advantage of and all that and sadly cheat on amongst many other things. Well, the bad boy, not so much. So who do you want to be like? In closing thoughts, she says, uh, happy wife, happy life should just be more than a slogan on a t-shirt. Marriage is about a healthy balance between yourself and your husband. We're, we're, we're both we're both work to meet each other's needs. Both of you must be happy, loved, and equally served to have a happy life together. Well, that sounds accurate in an ideal world. And let me tell you guys, throughout my life, my 44 years on this planet, I have seen couples that were happily married. And I do, and you can always say, yeah, well, how about behind closed doors? No, you know these people, and you actually know they are actually happy behind closed doors, but it is rare. It is extremely rare. And does it mean they don't have disagreements? Sure. Does it mean they don't have times where maybe things are challenging or difficult, whether between them, the kids, I don't know what? Of course. But they are good communicators. They both care about each other. They want each other to be happy and things like that. There's no bullshit going on. And usually, in fact, let me rephrase that. Always in these scenarios, the guy's masculine and the woman's feminine and he's a leader. It's not an accident. And again, it's a small percentage of what I've observed in those type of things. Because most people I've known in my life, they're married, are somewhere between just essentially living together like roommates, and they're never having sex, they're unhappy, to being outright miserable. And it's really sad. And these are the ones that don't have the strength to divorce. Okay, these are the ones that stay together for whatever reason that may be, and they're miserable. It's sad. But if, got, if men start acting like men again, you would probably see a lot less of that. And that's what we're trying to help out here. I don't encourage marriage anymore in the 2020s. Not after all what I have observed through my life and so on and so forth and the, the, the laws in the family courts and all that. But if you guys are going to do it anyway, and I know a lot of you are, regardless if you want to admit it or not, these are things to understand. You got to be a leader. You got to be a masculine. You got to take charge. You got to make her feel safe enough and comfortable with you enough that she'll let you lead. And then she can be feminine. But when you do this whole put her on the pedestal, happy happy wife, happy life crap, or just happy girlfriend, happy life thing, because if it's just a girlfriend thing, it's not going to go well for you, okay? And if women are honest, if women that watch me are honest about this, they'll agree with me. But then again, I also have a lot of haters that would just, anything I say, I'm the devil. Go figure. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know, guys, if you're honest, have you tried, have you, were you that guy at some point that did the same thing? The happy, the happy wife, happy life, or that, that type of thing, put her on the pedestal. How will that work out for you? And then, did you have a uh, epiphany, if you will, and turn things around where you weren't a jerk, but simply 
You start checking her on her BS. You start putting yourself first. You start start leading. How did things go then? How was she with you afterwards? Or how were future relationships when you started acting like a man, acting like a leader? I'm sure a lot better. I'd like to hear about it. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.